no fancy intro this time, folks. We're going to jump into some murky water here. Let me begin by stating that I consider myself platform agnostic, meaning I'm actually a fanboy of no OS or platform. I use the tool which works best for my needs. Android, iOS, Windows Phone, Blackberry, I've enjoyed them all. Matter of fact, one of my all-time favorite phones, a Windows phone, HTC's Touch Pro 2, still has a speakerphone setup that I don't think anyone is bested to this day, to this day. Now, I know this is Android Central, but today we're gonna perform a qualitative comparative analysis of Apple's new iPhone 13 Pro, Samsung's S21 Plus, the OnePlus 9 Pro, and Google's Pixel 5. Why not the Pro Max and S21 Ultra? Uh, I really wanted to take a look at the Apple devices I think most buyers will pick up, the standard 13 or the 13 Pro. So I chose to look at the 13 Pro and comparable Android devices across several performance categories. You'll find those timestamped below so you can jump right to the comparative analysis demo, which most piques your interest or watch straight through. Let's get into it. Let's begin with the heart of Apple's entire lineup this year, the A15 Bionic, and see how it compares to the Qualcomm processors used in these Android devices. Running Geekbench on all four devices, obviously Google's processor being the least powerful of the bunch, the results are a foregone conclusion, but just how much better the A15 is over the 888 is pretty significant, but expect it. Apple's previous gen A14 Bionic bested the 888 in many ways, so I won't belabor the point here, but processors don't mean everything if everything else down the line isn't optimized to take advantage of that raw processing power. And we'll get to that processing power in a moment when we look at computational photography and AI as it relates to camera tricks and AR. But first, let's talk about these displays and refresh rates. LTPO was actually first developed by Apple for its Apple Watch displays. It's the technology which allows dynamic refresh rates on high refresh rate panels. Samsung didn't want to pay the licensing and develop their own for their dynamic 120 hertz panels. OnePlus uses it in their 120 hertz panels. And after years of not having it on their phones, Apple finally brought ProMotion 120 hertz displays to their 13 Pro devices. And here's what they look like shot with high speed video. Slow down so you can see how smooth the animations actually are for each device. With the naked eye, they all look pretty much the same, but slowed down, you can see the difference in responsiveness while launching folders is, is pretty co comparable. As I scroll Android Central's web pages, you can see the content reacting to my gestures and again, how responsive it is or isn't. As I looked at these, it seemed that the Pro Motion display on the 13 was indeed more responsive, with one caveat. iOS 15 has a backend bit that developers have to hook into, so not all apps on iOS take full advantage of the new Pro Motion high refresh rate just yet. But for those which do, this is your result. Now, this one is going to be a bit subjective display quality on paper samsung and oneplus have the brightest displays coming in at 1300 nits while apples are 1200 nits but is that brightness differential obvious to our eyes the the other seemingly small difference which is actually pretty significant is hdr support apple supports dolby vision while the others support only hdr 10 plus the difference is about 67 billion, yes, billion colors. The former supports up to 12-bit color, which equals 68.7 billion colors, while the latter supports 10-bit, which equals 1.07 billion colors. 
That can make a difference when watching darker programming like my current favorite on Apple TV, C, or my other fave, The Witcher or Daredevil, both on Netflix. The most extreme example being that watching Daredevil, there are scenes beginning in season two, episode eight, where the hand ninja wearing black outfits with red accents are moving in and out of the shadows. The flashes of red can get lost in that darkness on lesser displays, but the combination of 12-bit color and 1200 nits allows you to capture details like that more prominently than HDR10 and HDR10+. One other benefit of that refresh rate I mentioned earlier is that the S21 Plus will go as low as only 48 hertz, but for Netflix and Amazon Prime Video, it plays at 120 hertz for 24 frames per second, which is what most films play at, and 60 hertz for 30 frames per second content, whereas Apple's ProMotion will match your stream content and refresh at 24 hertz when you're playing 24 frames per second content, thus saving battery, in theory. But with a higher resolution display than the S21 Plus and the Pixel 5, only bested by the OnePlus 9 Pro, things went a little differently than you might expect when I tested that theory. Also, recording temperature changes with the devices, I marked those too. 30 minutes of streaming video playback on each device netted these results. Google's Pixel 5 lost 5% of its battery with no change in temperature. The S21 Plus lost only 4% with a one degree increase in temp on its lower resolution display. The OP9 Pro lost 8% with a six degree change in temp with its larger display, while the 13 Pro lost just 5% with a five degree jump in temp. Now, like I said, the OnePlus 9 Pro has a larger, brighter, higher resolution display, 3216 by 1440, compared to 2532 by 1170 on the iPhone 13 Pro, so that result is unsurprising. Also, the OnePlus 9 Pro's display is 6.7 inches as opposed to the 6.1 of the Pro. So for a two-hour movie, you're looking at an average of 20% battery loss across these devices with OnePlus being slightly higher. Now that we have the displays out of the way, let's look not at what the phones put out, but what they take in. To make this interesting, I journeyed up the famed California coastline, PCH to be exact, to the Getty Villa Museum and took photos on its Instagrammable grounds, testing out the wide and ultra wide cameras, both outdoors and indoors, testing the macro capabilities, low light, selfie cameras, and those 3X and 10X zooms. Let's take this to the desktop. I've got my quad split up here, looking at all four cameras. Upper left, we've got the iPhone 13 Pro. Upper right, we have Samsung's Galaxy S21 Plus, bottom left, OnePlus 9 Pro, bottom right, Google's Pixel 5. And you're gonna see different angles on some of these a little bit because the different cameras have different angle lenses. Some are wider than the others. These are the main lenses here. I like the 13 Pro, and I'm just gonna say the word for the iPhone Pro Max, and the Pro in this case, is drama and intensity. Uh, the camera really gave all kinds of drama in all these photos, and by that I mean the colors are saturated, the contrast is high, uh, great shadow and texture depth. It really is dramatic. The S21 Plus, known for being overdriven in the past, oversaturated, really, really pumped up, is actually really natural in this case. So we've got the 13 Pro and the 21 Plus, the S21 Plus, and I really like them both. I prefer the more dramatic shot of the Pro, but some people might like the more natural on the S21, and even the OnePlus 9 Pro has a more natural look, whereas the Google Pixel 5 has a more dramatic image just like the uh, 13 Pro. And let's move on to the wide angle of that same setup here. And you'll see that same thing carries through. 13 Pro is dramatic. 
heavy shadows, darker contrast, uh, uh, more detail. The S21 Plus is brighter. Uh, it, the, to me, it looks a little more washed out uh, than the uh, 13 Pro. And let's look at the same thing with the OnePlus 9 Pro and the Pixel 5. And you can see that the OnePlus 9 Pro has more drama, has more contrast, a little darker in its reproduction, as is the Pixel 5. So which one do you like out of these? This is out at a fountain on the grounds. Really liked this color. And the sky is beautiful on this one. So this is the regular lens, not the wide angle. Uh, and you tell me, which do you like more? I really like the color and contrast of the 13 Pro and of the One Plus 9 Pro, the deeper blue uh, of the sky. I prefer on those two images over the Pixel and the S21. And moving right along, I'm gonna keep this thing moving because this video is already gonna be a long one with all the comparisons we have to do. Up here in the upper left, that was where I was standing when I took these 3X and 10X photos. So upper left right here, iPhone 13 Pro, that's where I was standing when I took the, the 10X and 3X photos. One of the interesting things, and I took a look at these earlier and kind of zoomed in, is that between the Pro and the S21 Plus, this guy was standing in pretty much the same place but you'll notice on the Pro, we get more texture in his face. We get more detail and it's not as dark and shadowy. Whereas with the S21 Plus, uh, we definitely get more shadow and we're getting a little less detail on the smile lines around his face. So the 13 Pro definitely gives us more detail, more texture, and it handled that shadow balancing that out a little better, I think, than the S21 Plus. Nothing to compare on the Pixel and OnePlus 9 because that guy wasn't standing in the shot as I took those phones out to take those shots as well. Uh, but you can see that the OnePlus 9 Pro, solid job with detail, color, and contrast, as well as Google's Pixel 5, solid, solid job with the detail, the color, and the contrast as well. So here are the 10X on all the cameras, except for the Pixel 5, because it doesn't actually have a 10X. It goes to like six something when you zoom in. And I think what is really telling on this is that we have here the 13 Pro gave us a, a pretty balanced shot in terms of shadow, in terms of uh, exposure, color and it's a really sharp shot with a great deal of detail in the mosaic. The S21 Plus, a little bit darker, uh, still good amount of detail, but the way they each handle the exposure, it just looks like the 13 Pro has more detail in the image. And then the OnePlus 9 Pro uh, does a solid job with its image. Oops, we skipped out of it, there we go. It does a solid job with its 10X, uh, uh, giving us good detail, but not as crisp, not quite as much detail. If you look at the cup, you can see that the, the, the it seems to be more detail in uh, the rendering from the 13 Pro. Now, next up is something I was actually trying to capture, and that's burst mode. A lot of folk don't talk about burst mode. The two cameras which captured the best image here in terms of catching that water falling out the gargoyle's mouth are going to be the OnePlus 9 Pro and Google's Pixel 5. Uh, they both did a really good job of catching those water beads, those water droplets as they came out. You can even see in the background the OnePlus 9 Pro, there was four heads, there's one gargoyle on each kind of quadrant of this fountain here. And the OnePlus 9 Pro even got clear images of the water droplets coming out of one of the other gargoyle faces and heads uh, from the side. Moving on, let's get indoors and look at some of those low light shots. We have a shot of a uh, uh, mom and child maybe here. And again, 
drama. Like I said from the beginning, one plus nine uh, has plenty of it. The but it's darker, whereas the uh, 13 Pro exposed a little lighter, but you get more detail in the slate. As you can see up top here, uh, up top, you can see the slate and you just have more texture and more drama in this photo. And I think that's one of the important things is that deep fusion on the 13 Pro and their computational photography is just really good at capturing that emotion, capturing that texture, capturing that drama of that image. And so out of these four images, the, the two I'm going to like the most personally are going to be the 13 Pro and the One Plus 9 Pro. And let's move to another indoor shot. This time, this was actually very low light indoors. This was a sarcophagus uh, uh, um, uh, and it was dark in that room. So I took a shot with the main camera on each and then zoomed out to an ultra wide. Um, and let's see what those results look like. So here's our main camera on each of these. And let's get to the main camera on the S21. There we go. On these, you actually get more detail when you zoom in. It looks like on the S21, you see it's all in focus. The foot area is in focus and the, the figures are pretty well in focus as well. Whereas the 13 Pro, the foot area is out of focus even though you have really good sharp focus on the figures on the body of the sarcophagus. And again, zooming into the OnePlus 9 Pro, it is really sharp. It's probably the sharpest of the four. And let's zoom in and look at the, the Pixel 5. You can see it's not as sharp. So probably the sharpest image of this bunch is gonna be the OnePlus 9 Pro. These were shooting this mummy through glass. And let's look at those ultra wides because the OnePlus 9 Pro was known for the quality and low light quality of its ultra wide. Again, I'm gonna go with the OnePlus 9 Pro on this one. You can see it's just a brighter image. It lets in more light without creating a bunch of noise. The S21 Plus has more noise in the upper area of the image here. The Google Pixel, is brighter than all of them and actually really sharp. Uh, but the background image here is a little blurry and there's just a little bit of noise in the image. I think out of the four images, I probably like the Pixel and the OnePlus 9 Pro, but the OnePlus 9 Pro, I think clearly takes the cake here uh, for these low light images. And uh, let's get into some macros because I was really impressed with what I saw out of the macro uh, cameras on this uh, particular uh, relief here uh, that we saw in the museum. The best one here, I'm definitely gonna give it to the 13 Pro and this is why. If you look at the images, you've got vignetting around the top of the S21 Plus where the image isn't clear here but the image on the 13 Pro is completely clear all the way through, no vignetting, and it's, it's a really sharp image with, again, drama. You see a lot of texture in the forehead area. You're getting more texture than the other images. And again, in focus, clear shot, uh, no vignetting, uh, where you start to see that uh, with the other cameras. So uh, with this one, with the macro lens, definitely, uh, going to go with uh, the 13 Pro is my favorite on this, and then the OnePlus 9 Pro as I think the runner-up. So here's portrait mode from the front-facing selfies. Of these portraits, which I looked at earlier, the skin tone probably looks the most natural on the 13 Pro and the Pixel 5. Uh, the most dramatic Again, goes to the 13 Pro. It didn't wash out my face, even though the sun was hitting me like it was. And the background is beautifully bokeh, uh, beautifully blurred. Uh, the Pixel 5 looked really great on the edges, great edge detection. And that background blur is really nice. Again, with good skin tone and uh, 
I, I could do without as much sun flare as there is in the OnePlus 9 Pro, which looks to kind of wash out the image. But that isn't all there is to see when it comes to those cameras. How about the video capabilities? iPhone is often thought of as the best phone for video recording, although I've been able to get excellent results with my Note 20 Ultra as well. You just need to know your tools. This year, Apple's added a cinematic mode, which gives you AI-driven automatic focus pulling. But what is focus pulling and how does that relate to cinematic mode? So cinematic mode, I'm gonna show you how that works manually with $5,000 worth of camera equipment. Now, Apple's figured out how to pull this off with $1,000, $1,200 worth of phone, but $5,000 worth of camera equipment, that's what I'm shooting with right now. Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K with a sub thousand dollar lens on it. Then I'm gonna show you an Android comparison. The only phone you can actually make this comparison with the Sony Xperia 1 Mark II. So, focus pulling. He's in focus first, because he's the action first. He's the action second, he'll be in focus second. That's what the whole purpose of cinematic mode and focus pulling is. Let's go, action. I come requesting more power. And look where that's brought you. Right back to me. Oh, I've come requesting more power. <laughs> and look where that's brought you. Right back to me. I've come requesting more power. <laughs> Look where that's brought you. Right back to me. Oh dear. With my cinema camera, the one I'm recording on now, and Sony's camera, you have to do the work yourself as you saw. But the impressive thing about Apple's cinematic mode is that one, it uses AI to determine when you want to change focal lengths, and two, actually determines the focal length all on the fly. It isn't perfect. This is first gen witchcraft after all, but without any bias, it's actually pretty damn cool science. And while we're talking video, let's compare the slow-mo functionality of the four phones. They say everything looks better in slow motion, so here's me with my trusty Boken. I'm out of practice, but again, Allegedly, everything is supposed to look better in slow motion, right? In my opinion, the S21 Plus and 13 Pro have the best looking slow-mo all around. The video from the 13 looks better, but the slow-mo on the S21 Plus I like more because it's 240 frames per second as opposed to 120 from the iPhone. But if I had to use it in a video, I'd use the 13 Pro for its better quality video output. And now, probably the most important video of all in this analysis, this comparative analysis, me, frolicking in the park. Yes, I frolic, especially when I'm testing out the video stabilization. I had my sons follow me as I frolicked, and you can see the results as they try to keep up. The smoothest video here actually is a mixed bag. The OnePlus 9 Pro looks smoothest without question, but my son was actually moving around more with the 13 Pro and S21 Plus more uh, hor you know, horizontally. Plus you have more movement, like I said, on the horizontal axis, but if you look at the up and down motion, it's actually pretty stable. The S21 Plus actually has jitters, and the Pixel 5 video has way too much noise. Which do you like most? Some additional notes and observations. The 13 Pro this year has a five core GPU, and in my benchmarking, the device which came closest to matching the 13 Pro's processing power was the OnePlus 9 Pro. So I tested their augmented reality capabilities using the Wayfair app and placing furniture in the room. If you held still, both apps pop the furniture into the frame fairly quickly, but when you started moving around, the OnePlus 9's AR was choppy, while the 13 Pro was smooth as butter. I'm sure that's due to not only those five cores of GPU power, but the 12 core neural processing unit and the six core CPU all working in tandem. So at the end of the day, we all have our preferences. And as you've seen, I tried to stay away from an OS discussion and really focus on the output 
of the hardware. And I have to say that this year's Pro model is a beast of a machine. So whether you're a Samsung Knight or Cupertino Commando, good technology executed well benefits us all because it pushes the envelope and advances what we can do creatively, productively, and recreationally. And me, I'm here for all of it. Hey, I'm Tashaka Armstrong for Android Central. If you have any questions about any of the technology, any of the features I talked about in this video, go ahead and leave those in the comments below. I'll get to them. Love interacting and engaging with you all. I will catch you on the next video.